say. And from my per perspective, it just sounds like a bunch of mentally ill lunatics that are essentially being taken advantage of by predatory women. Now, the reason I disagree with you on this, Laura, is because I think that what happens is you're able to sidestep the female responsibility portion of this by just saying, oh, the, the men want it, though, uh, and, and they're just beta. No, I don't think so. I think that uh, the women here are just as responsible as them because they're taking advantage of men. Who well, I didn't say that men want it and like they're not responsible. I don't think it's a great thing to do. Obviously, it's never something I've done. Um, so, no. But I think that they're young. They don't really know what they're doing. And probably <coughs> in 10 years, they might regret doing it. But the pro it could also just be that uh, it's kind of not really within the purview of their sort of natural role. I mean, I know this fit, like, it's not natural to this degree, but men are naturally providers. And like the idea of a woman, like financially gi giving money to a man is like kind of Degrading. disgusting Degrading. to them. What? But like for a guy, there is some inclination to give women money from a provider Mind mm -hmm. Well, there is a I, difference. I think this is a pathetic, there is no, a difference between fun. being a between being a provider and uh, wanting to. I actually feel really, really sorry for these guys that uh, customers. Um, I mean, it is very, very deeply hurt uh, man. Andrew, he is a provider. But would he? Is it something that uh, he would be looking something to be done like this to him? I mean, he's a provider for his family, but he has a connection with his wife. They have the bond. They are supporting each other. So I mean, it is uh, has nothing to do with uh, being a provider. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not saying that men. Hold on. I mean, that's not really what I'm trying to say here. I'm just trying to say perhaps the reason it's more common. One of the reasons it's more common, common am among men because I think men tend to lean towards an inc inclination towards providing. Sure. How many men, uh, after they provided it for her, st st stuck around? None. And childhood. They, yeah, they gave her money and disappeared. So it has nothing to do with uh, being a provider for her. I'm sure it, she has repeat clients. Yeah, though. trauma though. She, it's of yeah, trauma. but she said they're paying money and they're it's disappearing. Trauma. She is. No, but they. I think they come back. I think it's an addiction yeah. that these guys have as well. Like I think what you're saying is true, but it's an addiction. Like obviously in in matchmaking, like we. I mean, I represent very very wealthy guys, like top one percent. Like they come to us. I work with the millionaire matchmaker, so they're paying. 50,000 to work to get or like a serious relationship. So some of them will actually say no because they're, I mean, they're not like in the realm of it's doing money. this. However, I think it's like an addiction to spend money and feel like, oh my God, like I don't have this money anymore. And it's like, I think what Brian's saying about the providing, it's sort of like, let's put the guy in his place. Men give money. So, so uh, Laura, Laura, would you say then that Exana is incorrect about this? That it, that uh, there is a provider element, and she's just she's kind of off base there. I mean, I think it depends how you define provider. So, I think okay. she's defining provider in the sense of like a husband providing for his wife. Like these aren't those guys, but these guys do feel that like they need to give money to women and that's like their only purpose that's how they can feel useful they get shamed doing it and they definitely have low self-esteem and like psychological issues but i think it's just how you define provider but can what I is a driving that? force for them to I do something i think these men like are this. being taken advantage of that's what i say taken see advantage of yeah no, this, i think they're, they're being taken advantage they of. have a this king let them do in. it i mean i think that they can they don't feel like they were taken advantage abuse of. Uh, they, they just don't know men. how. Yeah, that's abuse. Men. It is like they are pushing wait, love wait, wait, away. I, I feel like these criticisms are not directed towards you, but you're saying that these men are being taken advantage oh, yeah. of and 1, then it's abuse. Mental. It's not physical. Mental. The findom thing. Uh, yeah. Mm. Do you guys have a response to this? I think they're grown men consenting to this, and also m submissive men just exist. Like it's, if a guy wants to be kicked in the balls or if he wants to be spat on or just talk downly. Huh? I think Sorry, there are grown going, men that a little bit. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And because, mm -hmm. because it's not socially normal, they have to come on the internet and find girls like me to do it to them because they're too scared to tell their girlfriends that they're I want to go home. Also, they like the damsel in distress effect and younger girls, they're more attracted to give them money. as like, oh, she's mm -hmm. a damsel in distress. 
Like she needs mm. the money. She's I young. Don't, I don't know. Right. That's no, that's all I post about is they of. like, like I've just sold screenshots of my bank account and they're like, get off to like, oh my god, you're so rich and you're 18, and. Like, I just brag about how much money I make to them, but they like it. They want videos of me just bragging that I'm richer than them. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Because of the- and at that time, so Wait, does your... your uh, by the way, uh, if you yeah. feel like uh, Kylie here is, resembles a previous panelist, your sister was on the show, yeah. I think about uh, seven, eight months ago. Does she do this too? I think um, we talked about maybe on the show, but... Does she do the Findom stuff? I, I, I put her on. She does do it, but for OnlyFans... It's just it's managed for her, so she can just send pictures and videos, and they do all the work for her. Right. This I do it all myself. Like I text them all myself, and mm-hmm. I don't think she's used to that, so she just doesn't go on it enough yeah. for it to work. You have to be consistent, like every day. I see. And this okay. is not part of the OnlyFans. I just don't know. It's not part of OnlyFans. Not at all. No, oh. it's separate. Yeah. Where do you guys get your clients? Like, what do you do? <laughs> this is Twitter. 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 Wait, can <laughs> you guys? Oh my gosh. I kind of want to look. Uh, up. Can you guys write for me? <laughs> how do you market that? Paper? Yeah, how do you market that? And they what? They pay you on Venmo? Like, what? I don't understand. It's this. a lot of third party apps. You've probably never heard, but like Wish Tender, Throne, but yeah. For marketing? No, what's those the one are the that you get paid on specifically? Oh. Uh, okay, so you think it's taking advantage of them? Oh, yeah, I think it's like, yeah. Oh, can you just write your both of your. Uh, tweets, oh. tweets, Twitters. The Twitter Ta- handles. Uh, handles. Write your Twitter handles. handles down. I just want to take a look, see see what I find. <laughs> um, and then uh, I guess you could. Do you have a Twitter too? Uh, I don't no. use Twitter. You don't use Twitter. Okay. All right. Uh, so. Wait. Actually, I think I do. Oh. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Wait. Really quick, just because it came to mind, Gia. Uh, you shoot scenes with men, correct? No. Oh wait. No. Just Did I this you said that. Who's no, I didn't. Anissa, we can replay the scene. I didn't say that. Huh? I never said that. Oh, I asked if you do BG content, boy no. girl content. You don't do boy girl solo content then? No. I do well solo? Like Well yeah, by yourself. Well yeah. yeah. Well not content. I just go live. Like I don't I have no content. Wait, don't you do OF? Yeah. Thank you. But I haven't posted anything. Oh, so you're Yeah. I'm- Oh, Gia, you, did, you did say that you do live explicit content, right? Yeah. With what men. does that mean? Like I go live in my bathing suit. <laughs> but no, I asked if you do it with men. No. Did, am I getting gaslit here? No, I think, I I think sure she, she did said. say no, she does. No, we can go back. It, I, no, she did say she does. But maybe you misunderstood. Maybe I don't. I understand. Of, like, I hear everything. Yeah, bro. Well, the question was boy girl. Too. The question was boy girl content, and the answer was yes, boy girl content. But maybe you misspoke. Do you do it with another male, or do the males just watch you? I don't do it with anyone. I am oh. independent. Like I do everything. So this would myself. be safe on Twitch. Do you stream on Twitch? I have. But you said you do. I it do on gaming. I game. Yeah. So it's nude. I do game it. What? Is it nude? What's that? Nude. The word naked. Dude? No. Naked. Naked. But it's so, on chatter. Well, that doesn't sound that explicit then. <laughs> <laughs> so you you don't do nude content or you do? But so why are you on Chatterbait then? Cuz you can basically stream whatever you want, like to. There's no like you don't sign a contract of ex- like you don't have to hmm. like do explicit if you don't want to. I like, mean, that's certainly possible that you could I sing, so that's On what I do. On Chatterbait? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, are you a soprano or alto or something else? Acu- uh, acoustic. I do acoustic singing. Like, yeah. No, what? So are you a soprano? I alto? just started, so like, I'm not like. So you don't very... sing? I do. Okay. Right. I write music too. Uh, I have can... two hit songs. So. You have original yeah. music? Yeah. Let's hear it. Go ahead, Original? Sing. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? You said you sing. What let's does that hear mean? Some, let's like, hear some singing. I thought you oh, yeah. I, I have, like, I have, you have my phone. My lyrics are on the phone. So. You haven't committed the lyrics <laughs> to memory? How about you just sing, uh, sing uh, like, a song that you know? I, I need a guitar person to tell them to play guitar. I don't just sing. I get paid to sing. Like, I don't sing for free. <laughs> <laughs> What? I feel like everyone's confused what's happening here. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like you don't. It's punked. <laughs> you, what? You sing? 
Yeah. That's in a bathing why suit. <laughs> like on chat. That's how Explicit I bathing suit. I over twenty have over twenty three k subscribers on Chatterbait, and I just blew up overnight. So that's why, like, I yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, you don't have to sing. That's fine. Um, so going back to the Findom stuff. Um, oh. What about you? You've just been, you said you've had like 20 Findom dudes or something? Yeah. Uh, what's the most you've been paid? Um, about 500 at once. At once? Yeah. And what's the most total from one guy? A um, couple thousand in total. I should probably so take that pen, pen top <laughs> back. I don't know why that wasn't collected. Uh, do you want me to slide it over to you? That works. Okay. Um, here, can, uh, how much total? I'm about a couple thousand. Okay, how, and how much total have you made in total from all the guys? Probably like six or seven K. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. getting started. Yeah. All right, let's see. Um, and then uh, let's do a bit of a role play here. So I'm the, uh, the um, <laughs> simp or whatever. Um, Hello, heavenly, blessed beauty. <laughs> Fuck you, cunt. Send me money for coffee. Oh, my God. Decaf or... <laughs> what kind of coffee do you want? A cappuccino. Cappuccino? <laughs> Quicker. Yes, yes, my dear. Personally, I would not let that slide. <laughs> Hurry let, the fuck up slide. here. I don't no, hear the ding. A cunt. I don't hear the ding I'm on my phone. I'm asking her to do the role play. I'm curious how this goes. What's that? I don't hear the ding on my phone. Quicker. Oh. Damn, this feels like gross even to role play. No, like, yeah, I know. Dude. It's unbelievable. Uh, I love it. It's uh, I can't. This uh. is like what the ninth circle of hell is. I know, would right? Be, yeah. seven would be this. Would be a woman talking to you like that and you actually doing it. That would just be that would yeah, just be the ninth wanting circle Wanting to of do hell. it is the thing. Wanting to do it. Dang. Do you ever, uh, you got, you ever uh, have like a rough day? Like, you ever go to sleep and you're like, fuck, I'm <laughs> fucked up from doing this shit. Really. No, I think it's funny. I genuinely laugh yeah. at it. What about it. you, Kylie? I love it. You love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Who hurt I know, you? I know, like, I know you get paid. Like, for example, with, with this podcast. Uh, Fake Post Trees 21 donated $199.99. Andrew, it's deadly serious. We need you focusing on more important things than the love lives of the kids who drowned in the shallow end of the gene pool. To it, Charlie, November means everything. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't think... Um, I think I might be a little too base for old TP USA. I think that they maybe maybe wouldn't like too many of my takes. and Maybe, maybe Charlie wouldn't like them too much. Just saying. He's kind of a, kind of a bit of a feminist a little bit. Just... Just say. Also, I'm. We are. We are doing. We are doing very important work here at the Whatever Podcast. We are investigating whatever it is the fuck you guys are doing. We are investigating that. We we are. This is the culture war. So, uh, yeah. Thoughts yeah. on that, Andrew? Yeah, well, I mean, I understand um, that there's a presidential debate on tonight, and many people want to watch that. That's totally okay. Nobody here or whatever is telling you not to, but there's a lot of people who uh, they don't give a shit about the debate and would much rather deal with the interpersonal dynamics of men and women, which is what we're exploring here. So, I think they just like to abuse someone. I mean, abuse man. And they monetized it, right? So the question is, right. do you like to abuse men? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they just monetize it, right? And it is sad. It is sad what men are doing. It is sad what uh, these girls are doing. Both are very, very young. And it's oh. like, I mean, it, that's where the separation of the true relationship is happening with us being isolated for so many years. And now it's like everybody is disconnected. It is... And what about you? Do you like when someone or man abused you guys mentally, physically? No, not at all. I didn't consent to it, so no. I think it shows the crisis of masculinity. 
going on. Like, obviously, these guys are extremely beta. Mm. They have extremely <laughs> beta mm-hmm. fetishes and kinks. Like, it, it's just, it's the crisis of masculinity right there. Like, a real masculine man who is a provider for his wife isn't going to do this. No, not at all. Right. Low, fi- low, oh. st- low Yeah, but who is... Now, uh, now Laura, can I give you maybe a little this? pushback on that? Sure. Um, perhaps they are the most masculine men on planet Earth. They're just extremely mentally ill. Right, I, I think you're just taking advantage of mentally ill and exactly. I mean, That's exactly possibly. what's going on. It's a king. But there's some girls that want to be like choked in the bedroom Can you and straighten your mic a bit. Yes, Completely. they want to be like. Wait. Yeah, you're good. Good. Okay. They want to be like choked in the bedroom and have like really like they want to be abused, but they get off to that like that is a turn on for them. So it's, why? Yeah, not maybe. So but let's um let's think about this a little it's bit. Do you, inside of this industry that you're in, the Fendom industry, would you say if the roles were reversed and there was um there was a man who was doing the uh, gonna abuse women for money thing, do you think that there would be nearly as fe- like many females stand. participating as our men? No. Well, there are I don't no. think so. No, you don't think so. Why do you think that is? Because women are emotional creatures. I think creatures. the question... Um, where are you at? Andrew, who's the question directed to? Uh, the question here would be directed at Penny. Me? Why do you think that is, Penny? Um, I just think women are more emotional and non-sexual. Well, they are sexual, but I don't think it's more for men. That are right, so it's a it's a sexualized fetish, right? Yeah. That seems to appeal to a certain demographic of men, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you were to have a methodology for the identification of mental illness, wouldn't that methodology include looking for anomalies in human behavior? Oh that would be how you would no, identify no, you if somebody is mentally ill or not, right? Yo, you got a fucking. Um. Yeah. And these are definitely anomalies, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely anomalies. So just saying, from my per- perspective, it just sounds like a bunch of mentally ill lunatics that are essentially being taken advantage of by predatory women. Now, the reason I disagree with you on this, Laura, is because I think that what happens is you're able to sidestep the female responsibility portion of this by just saying, oh, the, the men want it, though, uh, and, and they're just beta. No, I don't think so. I think that uh, the women here are just as responsible as them because we're taking advantage of men. Who well, I didn't say that men want it and like they're not responsible. I don't think it's a great thing to do. Obviously, it's never something I've done. Um, so no, but I think that they're young. They don't really know what they're doing, and probably <coughs> in ten years they might regret doing it. But the problem is, if they don't do it some other woman will <laughs> you know like it's an industry it's it's a kink it's a fetish it's like dominatrix it, it falls in that line of work so there'll always be someone and really if, unless we fix the crisis of masculinity it's not gonna be fixed and it is a mental illness but you could argue that doing porn is a mental illness being I dominated is a mental illness like all these things yeah. are mental illnesses yeah, I'm, so. not, I'm not sure that i would make the direct correlation this way with something like uh, like doing pornography, for instance, right? But uh, in the case of somebody who actually wants to physically have a woman's foot stomp on their genitalia, well, that's for the purposes, different. I'm talking about the guys just giving her like ten bucks for coffee, you know, or a thousand bucks. Yeah, that's a different well, level not, of. But they're not illness. doing that, right? They're giving her money. She has eighteen hundred twenty-five pl- paying clients per year who are actually soliciting a service from her, and that service is to be humiliated by her. Listen, right? I'm not condoning it. Like, yeah, no, I'm not saying you're condoning yeah. it. I'm just saying the reason that I think that um, these men probably are mentally ill and they're just being taken advantage of is because that's such an anomaly from the male perspective of behavior that I would have to categorize it in that other category of like, this is Fruit Loop shit, right? This is ways, it's so far outside of the ordinary for men to seek out social shaming by women. I don't know how else to categorize it except as a mental illness. If she has thousands of clients, though, and she's only one woman, is it really that far out of the realm? Or, like, have the men in America yeah, just totally lost it? Out of 180 million men, it's a, it's essentially a statistical Yeah, anomaly. but this is one girl. Like, how big do you think your guy's industry is? I, I heard it's a large industry. Even, Not really. Yeah, even if it was no? 50,000 uh, even if it was 50, men, that would be... A extraordinary small sample size. That's still too many. To <laughs> like, well, I'm not saying it's not too many, but I'm just saying that it's such a small sample size 
Uh, like there's far more uh, trans people out there than 50,000. I mean, far more. So, yeah, I would say that it's such a limited case uh, of actual, yeah, it's a niche, and I'm sure that there's some women who can do fairly well in the niche, but it's so outside of the purview for men to seek out social shaming by women. Usually the opposite is what you see, right? They're afraid to engage with women because they seek not to be socially shamed by them. In this case, the fetish is that they do. So I, I don't know how else I would categorize that. They're also men, they're like CEOs, and they have so much money sometimes because they're always so powerful. By the end of the day, they're so exhausted that they want someone t to to push them to the limit, maybe. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Because yes. there, there, are, there are a lot of CEOs that will be like strong and powerful at, job, at the job, but then when they come home, they're like a different being. And yeah. they just want to be used and abused and tell them they're worthless so they can go work and have more energy at work. Yes. It just yeah. sounds like some like bizarre power fantasy. Um, my guess is uh, yeah. these are men who are mostly saving up their SSI paychecks and their Social Security disability in order to uh, to get this sort of gratification. Not high power CEOs with uh, massive jobs that were they're raking in millions of dollars. Uh, what would even be the incentive for that? Right? They could get really, really high high class like international prostitutes to come in and do this service for them. There would be no reason to go on some uh, some social service where they could even potentially expose themselves, right? So it seems like uh, it's probably more likely if you're dealing with the numbers of uh, anywhere from 50 bucks to a few thousand dollars, even $10,000, uh, that's not that much money to save up over time uh, if you're on some sort of disability or mentally ill, that type of thing. But you mentioned prostitution. So do you think that it's not mentally ill and it's more fair if the guy is paying for a sexual service, then that's fine. Like, then he's not being taken advantage of. Is that your view? Uh, no, I just think, I think that he's, he's not being taken advantage of in the same exact way. So I would say he's doing something which I would have a moral problem with, but I'm not so sure it's outside the social purview of how, how enough men act that I would consider that to be a mental illness. I wouldn't say that it's such a rarity in the kind of psyche of the male that they could just go out and spend a couple hundred bucks for some pussy some night, right? And uh, and that's it, right? I'm not sure that I would categorize that in the same type of category as I'm seeking out social shame from the opposite sex on purpose and paying for it. These seem like, um, seems like you're kind of identifying an extreme and then comparing something which isn't so extreme against it. Fair. Yeah. 